Hello, uh, this is Dr. Ayu. Today, um, I'm going to discuss with you something very important uh, uh, that I made for you. It is uh, very important in that sense that every sonographer must, must describe their findings for the reporting by the radiologist and um, I made this to make you clear that when you see a pathology whether it is benign or malignant or different shape, size, echogenicity, borders different whatever the different varieties or parameters of description you can fit with the description with your findings so then you have to provide it okay so now I'm going to describe it uh, that how to describe normal and abnormal sonographic appearances so in this the lectures I will show you the normal sonographic view and the abnormal sonographic view and I will discuss that what is the findings you see in this uh, images and how you're gonna write it down okay so now let me move forward so this is uh, how to describe normal and abnormal sonographic appearances and the first of all we need to go that location where is it located if we see some pathology whether it is normal or abnormal means uh, bad thing so then where is it located in the organ sometimes you will see there are big organs and a small pathology is seen in one of the area of the organs say example for the liver liver is a huge biggest organ in the body in the abdomen and it has right lobe left lobe superior inferior side let right lateral left lateral so so many ways you can uh, describe it and if there is a pathology so this is this is a pathology here i see is the most lateral tip of the left lobe is a long view and there is some suspicious area suspicious and where is it located so left liver at the corner okay so mass in the anterior inferior part of the left lobe of the liver so this is sagittal view so this is anterior and this is inferior so this is anterior inferior part of the left lobe of the liver because I angle towards the left lobe that's why I said it is left lobe so now here what where is it located this is a hemangioma in the superior posterior part of the right lobe of the liver so this is a sad view so this is um, I mean uh, this is anterior and this is superior this is posterior and this is inferior so this is actually oblique view and here there is a hemangioma like structure which is located in the right lobe close to the dome of the diaphragm okay so you can see that where is it located it is most peripheral pathology is seen over here Okay, go to the next one. We go by the how many pathologies you can see. Here the polycystic kidney of the right lobe. And this is the polycystic ovarian disease. And the polycystic kidney of the right kidney, polycystic cyst in the right kidney. This is liver. And you see one, two, three, four. Maybe there are more. But okay, if this is one, one, two, three, four, five. So you can count five. How many are there? Sometimes an organ has multiple cyst. So then you can say, okay, the organ has multiple cysts of different shape and sizes. Here, 
we know the polycystic ovary so in this view how many cyst polycystic uh, things you see in the ovary so you can count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so there could be much more and this is one view of the ovary but if you move angle up angle side by side then you can see more and more and more okay so that's the way you can count how many because everybody wants to know how many so example if there's a breast multiple cyst and then you have to write down how many where are they located and how big are they you some organs is very sensitive you have to be very specific okay next size if you look carefully then you will see this is a cyst adenoma of the ovary is measured you measure and you set what is the size of the cyst it is 3.6.3 centimeter by 4.2 centimeter and here we see a mass over here thyroid nodule and you can measure and you can say how big is it so we need to know where is it located how many are they and how big are they okay that's the way you have to measure the sizes so now shape i need to describe what does it look like what is the shape so now this is a pretty much round shape here this is the benign tumor of the placenta called choriocarcinoma good so now we can at this time we can also see a choriocarcinoma okay placental tissue called choriocarcinoma and now here you can see this is oval shaped hypoechoic mass of the left abdominal wall so now in the abdominal wall there's an oval shaped okay this is an oval shaped this is a circular shaped circular shaped okay so it's better to say not choriocarcinoma at this time because it is in the placenta and we see you can say choreo um, adenoma choreo hemangioma whatever it is but main thing is we need to see that it is a round more or less round and this is more or less oval shape this is completely oval shaped okay so this is oval shape and this is another one called elongated sometimes we found as a tubular okay so we need to write down okay i can tell you if it is in the placenta it is in the anterior abdominal wall and i believe this is fluid filled cyst in the breast this is the breast glandular tissue and we see this is a elongated fluid filled cyst okay that's the way we will describe it now borders look at the irregularities and the smooth border so let's describe first look at the smooth border this is very thin rim of the mass and the very smooth there is no irregularities this is uh, pretty much i will say this is benign yes it looks like a benign but here look at the description of the border it is pretty much it is irregular speculated spiky and also it has a posterior shadow and look carefully that when there is a irregularity is spiky then you can see you feel like that somebody is pulling the tissue towards it because of the striation look at the striation of the tissue striation of the tissue okay it feels like you can tell it is in this mass is invading into the surrounding tissues okay so that's the way uh, you can uh, in preclude that is it a benign nature or malignant in nature so 
we can tell that irregularities of the border irregularities of the border it goes along with the malignancy character malignancy character okay next one is contour we need to describe the contour of the mass border could be regular irregular spiky or speculated but the border as a whole it could be contour we discuss the what is the contour of the mass you can say oh it is a lobulated so with all the borders together how are we going to describe the mass then we call it contour is contour means outer periphery is regular or lobulated or non-lobulated look at here this is the kidney so here the kidney is little wavy we call it contour is lobulated here look at here non-lobulated this is also kidney is a non-lobulated means the kidney as a whole is very good looking okay shape is nice not lobulated so this type of lobulator some organs are congenitally lobulated so left kidney is little more lobulated than the right kidney okay so in that way pathology can be described organ could be described that how is it now organ could be cystic organ could be solid okay organ could be cystic solid mixed so here in this image you will see the fluid filled cyst this is a simple cyst of the breast look at here this is oval shaped this is circular okay and cyst i will say this is a simple cyst this is a simple cyst why because the simple cyst has four criteria what are those criteria a smooth thin wall a smooth thin regular wall a smooth thin regular wall and anechoic inside anechoic inside anechoic means sonolucent inside and posterior enhancement means brightness posterior brightness the reason of this brightness is the rate of attenuation means rate of loss of beams intensity is less than the surrounding tissue that's why it is more brighter or called enhanced and these are the is refracting shadow is refracting shadow in the physics you learn that is refracting shadow is due to the refraction takes place because when the sound beam is having an incident with an oblique incidence because this is a round always incident will be oblique so then beam in the second media will be diverted from the borders as a result beams brightness on other side is more but this is the area where the intensity of the beam beam was supposed to come this way but it did not it moves the other directions so this is darker because the beams intensity is low here okay so that's why it is called uh, as refraction as refracting shadowing okay so now this is a complex cyst look at here a complex cyst is not a simple cyst so simple has a criteria that i said to you the smooth thin round border then sonolucency inside that means no internal echo posterior enhancement and is refracting artifact if you look clearly here that you will see this is a hemorrhagic cyst in the ovary in the left ovary and this echo internal echo this is the blood okay the blood clot and blood organized inside and looks brighter so this is called complex because even though it's a smooth border but there is an internal echo even though a simple cyst everything criteria matches with the simple cyst but 
inside the cyst there is a one internal echo still we you cannot say this is a simple cyst you have to tell this is a complex cyst now here complex cyst mass located inferior to the bladder so now this is a big mass and complex mass because the cystic part is here and this is a solid part is here this is the calcifications is here okay so it could be anything um, inferior to the bladder so um, unless it is biopsied you cannot rule out what is it specifically but you can say this is a pelvic mass okay so now let's move on now solid mass homogeneous or heterogeneous homogeneous means look same all over heterogeneous opposite look dissimilar within the mass so now this is a mass I will say solid mass and looks all over smooth homogeneous look all over same I will call it homogeneous so homogeneous mass could be isoechoic could be hypoechoic could be hyperechoic okay so this is a mass homogeneous but this one is a heterogeneous because it has some anechoic area hypoechoic area hyperechoic area so i will call it a heterogeneous tumor located in the bladder oh my god this is in the bladder so what it could be the most common um, uh, tumor in the bladder is common uh, urinary bladder you know that um, the um, epithelium transitional cell epithelium inside the bladder and the most common mass is uh, transitional cell carcinoma so it could be a transitional cell carcinoma and when it is heterogeneous you have to understand there might be some necrosis started and looks like heterogeneous okay so this is a heterogeneous mass inside the bladder now mass with posterior enhancement so now here understand I showed you enhancement with the simple cyst but here you can see also simple not some not only simple cyst it is a uh, complex cyst because this is abscess and this is a solid mass fibroadenoma of the um, uh, breast or hepatocellular um, carcinoma here they found but still they have posterior shadow posterior enhancement okay lot of uh, fibroadenoma of the breast has posterior enhancement so now this is an abscess in the spleen and this is the enhancement because this part is a liquid maybe pass inside and the beam is try, trying to travel through it but the rate of attenuation is less that's why enhancement we found here enhancement and here even though this is a solid mass so there is still posterior acoustic uh, I mean the enhancement so that means the rate of attenuation while it, the beam energy is passing through this mass the rate of loss of the intensity beams intensity is still less than the surrounding tissue that's why it gives enhancement okay keep that in mind the not always the liquid will give the enhancement that solid can give the posterior enhancement too because the posterior enhancement and posterior uh, shadowing depends on the loss of beams intensity we call it attenuation the amount of loss means the amount of attenuation or rate of attenuation loss so it will determine the shadowing or enhancement now mass with posterior shadowing look at here so this is a posterior shadowing a mass 
so this is hepatog hepatic stetosis with posterior shadowing they said stetosis means the accumulation of the fat and uh, but it's very unusual that accumulation of fat it gives this dark shadow okay so but it's very unusual but i will tell you that this is a mass so whatever the mass we don't know exactly but we will do the biopsy then we will know what is it but our important is look at the shadowing the too much shadowing too much attenuation taken place so this is posterior shadow now look at here here there is a um, posterior shadow too they said right iliac fossa mass with posterior shadow okay in the right iliac fossa so there is a mass and it has a posterior shadow it also look like that sometimes the gallbladder might have a stone that highly attenuated stone so that gives the very dark shadow look at that shadow can we see anything behind this shadow not possible because the concentration of darkness is too much too heavy that's why we cannot see anything behind it so now this type of shadowing in one hand it is diagnostic and also it is an artifact why artifact because it's not permitting to see anything behind it okay so now this is posterior shadow again the shadowing is the rate of loss of beams intensity is more in this area than the surrounding tissue that's why it is more darker now normal vascularity so this is kidney this is renal hilum the artery is passing through it the vein is there so you will see all over the artery and vein this is the normal picture normal vascularity of the right kidney and this is normal vascularity of the right lobe of the thyroid gland okay so just pay attention when you do the vascular doppler study you set up the gain you have to fix that gain from the beginning to the end it's not like that in one image you increase the gain in uh, uh, color gain in other image you decrease the color gain then another image you optimize the color gain you cannot do that you have to set the color gain fixed from the beginning to the end so these are the normal vasculature normal vasculature okay so now let's go to the hypervascularity look at here this is a hypervascularity of the right thyroid gland this is the hypervascularity too much looks like a christmas tree okay fire of works fireworks okay so now here hypervascularity of the testicular seminoma look at here seminoma you know that it's a malignant most common malignant tumor in the uh, testicles and it is a hypervascularity okay so you have to train your eyes that it is no look at the gain adjustment first okay gain is 50 percent 60 percent if you see the, this is the color and your gain is 90 percent i will say oh this is an artifact you increase the color gain that's why it came like that okay go down to 50 to 60 then show me the color then if it colorful like that i will tell you it is hypervascularity now hypovascularity this is hypovascular mass in the right side of the groin okay this is the hypovascular mass so hardly you can see one two blood vessels area this is hypovascular testicular hematoma with minimal vascular flow okay so hematoma usually does not need vascularity inside you can see the vascularity outside okay it looks like a mass with a minimum vascularity okay so now you got it now no vascularity look at here this is 
testicular torsion. There is a vascularity around the torsion, but there is no vascularity inside the testis, and I will say the testis is dying. I see the necrotic area. Okay, and hypoechoic, edematous, and the necrotic area. Okay, so this is uh, testicular, I mean the testicular torsion, and I will see also you can see the the uh, scrotal wall is thick and too. Now here is the mass you see you put the Doppler gate still there is no flow. So that means no vascularity. No vascularity means what? The organ is dying. Okay, so this is important. So if there is no vascularity, let me teach you something. If there is no vascularity here, so you might feel still there might be low flow, but normal color Doppler is not taking the color. Then what you need to do next? You need to click the power Doppler. In power Doppler, there might be very slow flow even from with the capillaries and that type of flow can be recognized by the Doppler, power Doppler. And if it is a power Doppler, then you see the color is coming in. So then you can say that this organ is still savable. So please, if you don't get the color in the color Doppler with the color Doppler, then still you have to click the power Doppler. And you know that power Doppler is an angle independent. You don't need to fix the power angle of power Doppler. Okay, now we will discuss about the echogenicity. Echogenicity, look at here, this is kidney. In kidney, we see there is a mass in the arrow and it is more brighter. But look at the kidney cortex here, it is darker. Look at the renal sinus, it is brighter. Okay, so this is hyper echoic mass in the anterior superior location of the right kidney. Here there is a hyper echoic mass in the uterus. Okay, this is leomyoma but it is hyper echoic. You can say, oh this is calcified. Yes, I will say this is normally the leomyoma is not hyper echoic. It is not hyper echoic. When it is show it is hyper echoic like this view, I will say, oh this is uh, calcifications of a mass. Okay, this is uterus. Okay, so this is uterus. Okay, so this is hyperechoic. Now let's go the hypoechoic. Hypoechoic. Look at here, in comparison to the previous image, it is more darker. It is in the kidney. Look at here, this is hypoechoic. This is in the sinus, it is hyperechoic. Okay, this is in the kidney cortex. Kidney cortex is little more brighter than, the, than this hypoechoic because this hypoechoic is a mass, renal mass. Now, look at the liver here. So this is the liver. Liver is, has this standard echogenicity which is medium level hypoechoic. You need to compare couple of organs with this liver. So liver is little hyperechoic with the then the kidney cortex and the liver is little hypoechoic than the pancreas. Okay so you can use the liver as a standard to compare with certain organs. Here again, hypoechoic mass in the neck. So it could be a lymph node in the neck. Okay, now look at here. This is a mass, solid mass. But still there is an enhancement. Did you notice it? Yes. Did you notice it? Yes. Uh, enhancement. Now, isoechoic liver lesion called focal nodular hyperplasia. This is the characteristics of the focal nodular hyperplasia. What is the characteristics? 
you most of the time you will not see the capsule around it because it has no capsule okay so it has no capsule that's why it is very hard to measure how big is it and it is also isoequic to the liver but then how you can say how do i know this is a mass listen your